I'll just give it a few minutes. Um, let's see where we go. Usually everyone sort of starts to trickle in a few minutes after 6.30, so it might just be a few minutes. I can't, um, I can't see an option to chat to everybody. It just says host yes. and panellists. Is that how it's meant to be? I think because you're a panellist, um, you won't be able to see the attendee list. Can you see the attendees? No. Yeah, okay. I think that one probably just stays with me as the host. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you can, I can see you in the chat. Um, you should be able to change to panellists and attendees. Yeah. In the chat box. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm only on hosts and panelists. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all good. No worries. I'll keep an eye um, down the bottom there. No stress. to those who have trickled in I can see you sort of slowly coming in just going to give it a few minutes before we get started to give everyone an opportunity to log on um, so just at 6 28 so I might give it till 6 30 before we kick off um, so just bear with us thank you for joining us Sarah Sheila Laurie Janet hello hello we'll be starting shortly Hi everyone, thanks for coming in. I can see you all coming in slowly. Might just give it a couple more minutes just to give everyone a chance to log in. Sorry for the delay, um, but yeah, we'll get started soon.
I might just give it one more minute and get it started. Thanks everyone for joining us. I can see you all there. We'll give it one more minute to give everyone a chance to log in. Okay, so we might get started. Thank you everyone for coming along on your Thursday evening and joining us tonight. So tonight we will be doing a bit of a webinar on Plastic Free July. So this is all about trying to limit your single-use plastic consumption in your day-to-day -day life. Um, so we've got some lovely panelists here um, who are going to sort of talk about what they're doing in this space um, to reduce their plastic consumption and give you a bit of inspiration about what you can do at home um, to sort of start this journey. Um, so we're very excited to have them here. Just before we kick off, I'm just going to go over some Zoom housekeeping. So when we do go into questions, um, please use the Q&A box down at the bottom of your screen towards the right. If you just type in your questions there, I'll be able to read them out to the panelists. Just make sure you type in which panelists you'd like to ask the question to, and uh, we can get your questions answered live. Um, if you have any tech issues or just some things that you want to add to the conversation, feel free to pop that in the chat box um, and we can discuss it um, on screen, which is great. Um, so that's about it in terms of housekeeping. Because it's a webinar, um, you're not going to be able to see or hear yourself, so don't panic if you can only see us. That's all normal. Um, so yeah, we might just kick off. We've got a short film to show you, uh, and then we'll get into uh, the Q and A. But before we do the short film, uh, we might want to introduce our panelists and let them sort of briefly discuss uh what they're doing in the space so i might just go from the bottom left so we'll start with sasha um sasha do you want to unmute yourself and let us know what you're doing in the space and talk about tom bag with us uh, sorry guys uh, my three-year-old is screaming a little bit here in the background um yeah uh, uh, my name is Sasha Pistano and uh, I'm a co-founder at Tombeck and Tombeck is a B Corp certified social enterprise where we've created the uh, world's first um, uh, truly circular uh, reusable garbage bag to replace single use bin liners uh, and I'm super excited about today's screening because um, Tombeck's journey basically started um, with my personal journey um, uh, when uh, I watched uh, a documentary uh, similar to today's documentary about uh, single use plastic pollution, uh, and uh, I was just trying to reduce single use um, uh, plastic in my own household. And then uh, I basically came up with an idea um, of a reusable garbage bag uh, to replace single use bin liners in our own household. And uh, uh, now uh, at Tombag, uh, we uh, sell uh, reusable garbage back to consumers, but also work with businesses uh, and help them um, in their sustainability uh, journey. Um, and we work with uh, commercial cleaning uh, companies and um, facility management companies, both in Australia and abroad. Um, yeah, so that's uh, I guess that's a, a short introduction about Tombag. Um, yeah. That's it for me. <laughs> Thanks, Sasha. Thank you for going through that with us. Um, so Tombag is actually uh, also a part of Better Business Partnership. So it's really fantastic to um, have her along with us tonight to talk about this really awesome startup um, and this new journey of essentially ridding the single-use bag in our garbage bins. So really, really lovely to have her here with us tonight. Uh, next, we have Michael Hughes from Let's Go Shopping. So I might just ask you to introduce yourself and let us know what you're doing in this space. You just got to unmute yourself, Mike. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, I uh, used to be a geologist working on the mines, and then somebody put me in touch with permaculture, which turned my life 180 degrees. And now I'm basically trying to help people grow their own food, 
um, which I consider the biggest sort of plastic use area of all of our lives. Um, and I'm heavily involved with Permaculture Sydney North, which is the, the permaculture group of this um, area, doing lots of voluntary workshops, teaching people living skills, how to recycle things in the garden and keep, well, essentially stop consuming and putting more plastic into the environment. Fantastic. Thanks, Mike. Uh, and finally, we've got the lovely Jen with us tonight from Boomerang Bags. Karingai. Uh, so we've worked with Jen a lot in the past. She's done a webinar with us on how to sew your own face mask. So we really love the collaboration we have with Boomerang Bags. Um, so Jen, I'll let you talk about what you're doing over there too. Um, I run the Karingai group. We're one community of about 1,100 worldwide. We make reusable shopping bags out of reclaimed fabric. So from anything from shirts to tablecloths, sheets, doona covers, pillowcases, offcuts from um, uh, upholstery, anything we can get our hands on, we will make into a shopping bag and we give these bags away so people can reuse them instead of having single use plastic bags and the ones from Coles and Woolies. So far we've made over 6,300 in those five years and given them all away. And you can find them on the bag wall up in Gordon, Ten Ives, and in all four Kuringai libraries for now. So that's what we do. Fantastic stuff. Thanks, Jen. Um, so those are all our lovely panelists with us tonight. Also got Sally and Min here who work in council uh, in the environment and sustainability team along with me. Um, so yeah, we are just all here to talk about all things Plastic Free July. So thanks everyone for coming along. Um, so I might actually kick off with our little short film. It's about five minutes and it's just a look into how pristine Sydney looks on top, but what sort of is going on below in the spaces where you can't actually see with your eyes. So I'm just gonna share my screen with you guys and get this going. Uh, and like I said, it's yeah, just about five minutes. But do let me know in the chat box if you can't see or hear anything. Sydney Harbour is one of the most iconic locations probably, arguably, in the world. When you look at it, it just looks so beautiful. Well, it's the most iconic waterway in, in all of the world. But if you go up uh, into the Parramatta River, you know, you can't swim in this water body. I would probably call it a paradox um, because it does look beautiful, but it is one of the more modified and polluted estuaries along our coastline. In Australia, the CSIRO estimates 1,560 kilos of plastic is entering into our waterways every hour. With all of the urbanisation that we have and all the impervious surfaces, one of our big threats right now is actually stormwater runoff. 15 Olympic-sized swimming pools of gross pollutants enters our harbour on a yearly basis. Yeah, you know, I, I do a lot of stormwater research and after we have some of these really big rainfall events, the harbour, it's just quite tragic. Two thirds of our pollution come from stormwater runoff. And if you look at the bottom of the ocean, uh, plastic does sink. It's estimated that 70% of debris that enters the ocean actually sinks to the sea floor. I don't think unless you spend time underwater, you got a true appreciation of, of what is below there. And I think if more people knew, they'd just be horrified. All right, guys. Well, first of all, thanks for turning up today for the uh, Dive Against Debris, an underwater beach cleanup. We work closely with the scuba diving community, so engaging them in our programs such as Dive Against Debris. About every six weeks, we run a dedicated underwater cleanup. The divers are amazed. The first time they do it, they can't believe it. Yeah, it was kind of sad because we saw so many plastic, right? Yeah. And we just wanted to pick up all of them, but it was a bit too much. And they're so like jellyfish. I was even confused because this was floating like just so nicely and smooth. <laughs> it was crazy. Overwhelmingly, we find plastic rubbish. Probably half of everything we found today, um, you know, was, was plastic bags. But the remaining 50%, probably 40% of that is made out of plastic. 
yeah, I feel disheartened sometimes, but the, but at the end of the day, we've got solutions. We're seeing a certain reduction in, in bottles, which is fantastic. The return and earn scheme is a fabulous thing. It definitely has made a difference. We used to get a lot more um, plastic drink bottles and a lot more soft drink cans. The main challenge really is one of, of true disbelief. Every day people just don't understand. When they look at the harbour it looks beautiful and they can't believe that we can get all of this plastic and all this rubbish just under the surface. Each year we pull out just under about 500 kilos. It's an extraordinary amount. And today that's basically 60 minutes and 10 divers, literally 20 metres from the shore. This gives you a real snapshot of what Sydney Harbour's really like, what there really is in you know, all that plastic lurking under the surface. I mean, we are choking habitats and entangling organisms. It also affects the whole food chain, so all debris breaks up and organisms at the lower end of the food chain are, are eating those items and then that can bioaccumulate and is ending up on our own dinner plates. We're ingesting something like a credit card worth of plastic on a weekly basis. It is a public health issue. I think there's probably a couple of layers of where Sydney can start to help improve the, the water and sediment quality in Sydney Harbour and it, it has to start at the source. We've got to reduce the amount of plastic that we're using. We've got to recycle better and we've got to be more conscious that what's going down our drains ultimately ends up in our oceans. Inaction just isn't an option. It's a living organism and if we ruin the ocean, we're going to kill ourselves. 50% of the oxygen that we breathe in, so every second breath we take comes from the ocean. Uh, the ocean absorbs 30 odd percent of carbon dioxide and our food source. It is a sad reality when you walk down the beach, invariably you're picking up rubbish. But I'm a firm believer in small actions multiplied by millions can make change and we absolutely can drive change. We can work together, we can fix this harbour and bring it back to, to where it was. But it's pretty simple, if we kill our oceans, we kill ourselves. It's that simple. Okay, cool. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, we just thought that would be a good way to start the Q&A, um, just to give you a brief idea of what's happening locally uh, where we live in Sydney. Um, yeah, so it's obviously a very um, pervasive issue that impacts us all. Um, so I think we might just get started with our Q&A. So to everyone who's attending, um, would you please put your questions through the Q&A box? Um, and yeah, any questions you have uh, directed towards any of our panelists about uh, what we can do in our day-to-day -day life to help reduce single-use plastics, uh, whether it's at home or at work or when we go out. Um, and we'd love to get a discussion going, um, yeah, about all the potential solutions that are out there. Um, so I might kick off with one of my own questions just to get things going. Uh, Bridget, I can see that you want the link to the video. I will get that into the chat box for you. Um, okay, I might start with one of my own questions. So I might go with Sasha because one of the biggest things I have in terms of plas uh, using plastics every day is my garbage bag. Uh, it's disgusting how much how many times I have to replace the bag so I started using those compostable ones but I found that they obviously break quite easily um, and just weren't really reliable so um, we should be able to let us know like how Tom bag works what the material like how, what it's sort of designed with and sort of how it works as the ultimate garbage bag so um, in terms of the cleaning uh, and the emptying and all that kind of thing, because I really think um, the Tom bag is going to be something that will be really good for me in terms of my daily habits uh, and sort of replacing that single-use plastic. Yeah, uh, thanks for your question. And uh, I probably will start uh, with a note on compostable garbage bags and in general um, 
uh, on compostable products um, because um, before we started uh, Tombak, we obviously researched all the possible alternatives uh, to um, single-use garbage bags made out of virgin plastic and uh, uh, compostable garbage bags and compostable uh, products in general, uh, if they end up uh, in landfill, uh, they actually uh, cause more problems uh, than uh, single-use virgin plastic, uh, just because uh, they release methane uh, when they end up in landfill, uh, they can't break down properly. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, these uh, finding uh, just shocked me because, uh, you know, compostable products are usually advertised as green, as eco, and uh, it was just absolutely opposite of what eco should be. Uh, so uh, that's how basically we, uh, we decided to do what we are doing. We, we decided to do a reusable uh, product instead. Um, so um, now uh, back to your question, uh, how to use Tombag, a reusable garbage bag. Uh, so basically you are using it uh, more or less the same as you would use a single use um, uh, garbage bag. You just fill it in uh, with, uh, with your trash uh, and then you just tip it out uh, in your main uh, like wheelie bin uh, and you bring it back home, um, uh, unlike um, uh, your single use uh, uh, trash bag. Uh, you can use it, uh, you can, sorry, you can wash it um, um, depending on the kind of waste you're using it for. So um, uh, in our experience, we're using it obviously at home ourselves. Uh, so in our experience, if we are using it for recycling bin, uh, then we wash it probably once uh, every two months um, by simply simply wiping it down with a uh, like damp soapy clothes uh, or we just can pop it uh, into our washing machine and uh, wash it for 10-15 minutes with just cold water uh, so uh, we don't use heat um, uh, for warming up the water uh, if it's a uh, general waste, because we compost our food scraps, it also doesn't uh, really get messy, uh, but we do have customers, uh, including business customers that are using it like for messier kind of uh, type of trash. Uh, so in this case, you would need to obviously like wash it uh, more frequently. Um, probably not after each use, but maybe like uh, once a week or twice a week. Um, and then you're basically like reusing it. And uh, um, <clears throat> it's a very sturdy design. Uh, we wanted to create a circular product and one of the principles of circular uh, design is uh, uh, like a sturdy design, a uh, product that could last. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, depending on the kind of waste um, uh, you're using the bag for, uh, you can use it for at least one year. <clears throat> uh, but uh, I, I don't know, for our recycling bin, I think it will just uh, uh, leave more than I, I will. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, um, it's just uh, uh, how, how we wanted the product to be. Um, uh, yes, it's uh, the, the, the basic like kind of a circle, uh, a life cycle uh, of our product and uh, that's how you use it. Um, yeah, uh, so in terms of washing, you can just uh, wash it in the washing machine or just like wipe it down, that's it. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Sasha. Um, yeah. I think it's like a really, really cool idea that um, <laughs> you just put in the washing machine. So I think people sort of get a bit worried, like, oh my God, do I have to like wipe this down myself? Like how am I gonna keep this clean? Yeah. My house is gonna smell bad, da, 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 da. But I think like the ease of just like, just, you know, you can rinse it down quickly and put it in the machine to give it that good wash. Uh yeah, that's a good uh, good uh, remark as well. Um, you know, we often do get comments uh, regarding like, uh, you know, oh my God, you know, it's a reusable garbage bag. How can I put it in my washing machine? It's yucky and stuff. Uh, but um, first of all, uh, as a mom, I can tell you that you uh, you uh, sometimes uh, have to put into your washing machine uh, much uh, worse stuff like reusable soil nappies. <laughs> so reusable garbage bag is not such a big deal. Uh, and then uh, I was also thinking about it. So, uh, I mean, if you're worried um, uh, about, um, or like if, if this thought uh, of an idea of washing a reusable garbage bag disgusts you, uh, then maybe you have to uh, rethink what kind of trash you produce. Uh, so what, uh, what is so yucky about your trash? Is it uh, um, single-use nappies, soiled nappies? Is it uh, uh, single-use uh, uh, 
female hygiene products? Uh, is it your food scraps? Uh, but all that actually uh, can be replaced with the reusable alternatives. You can also compost your food scraps. So basically you can uh, make it less yucky by transitioning to more sustainable swaps. Uh, and then you don't have to worry about like, you know, uh, uh, how, how yucky it is, how uncomfortable it is to wash your reusable, reusable garbage bag. So, um, uh, and our customers are actually um, very often uh, uh, <clears throat> notice that uh, after they uh, transition to reusable garbage bags, they start to uh, become uh, more sustainable in terms of like what kind of waste they generate, you know, they just like notice uh, their trash, they, they produce more, you know, um, they do like the trash audit kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, I think um, the more you're conscious about your waste, the more you're sort of conscious about what you're actually purchasing and yes. consuming, which I really think leads on to what Mike does with Let's Go Shopping. Um, so maybe Mike, can you take us through like what's a really good way of sort of separating your waste or managing your waste or just being more, you know, aware of your waste to make sure that you're not generating so much wet waste that goes to landfill? Well, I was just going to start with, um, it's all about our habits. Like plastic is a, a convenience thing. It's all like Mo, mo, the most plastic's been invented because it's convenient for us to store food in, to dispose of it, to, and it's about looking at your what you do in life one one thing at a time and incrementally doing something, what like try something one one thing this week and then next week try something else and it just rolls on at the end of the year you've changed fifty two things in your life that reduce plastic and it's not that difficult and like Sasha said, one thing leads to another and you sort of roll onwards with it and you, you you do start to look at your life in different ways and see it from a different angle and think oh maybe if i did this i can um reduce this amount of plastic and stop that going in my bin uh, the, the biggest thing like in my house we don't even have, i don't even use bin bags i just throw stuff in the bin because we compost all our food and now my kids are out of nappies thank god um it's uh there's not not the um the sludgy waste, I guess, in my bin anymore. So yeah, we don't even use bin bags, period. Uh, I, when I go to the supermarket, I never get the veggie bags. I just put the veggies in my trolley, straight in my trolley and balance them all on the um, the pay scales when I go out. Yeah, that's fantastic. Like, I've noticed that um, like Coles and Woolies and stuff, they're conscious of, because of the single use plastic band, they're conscious of having those fruit and veggie bags there. And then they sort of just replaced it with, you know, eco bags or green bags or compostable bags or whatever. And it's just like, can't we just put it in our trolley and just, you know, check out and pay for it? It's just so strange that everything has to, like you said, Mike, it's about convenience. Like everything needs to be convenient. Like everything needs to be within hands to reach. Like just that little bit of extra effort to pick up, you know, maybe three apples with your hands instead of having a, a bag handle to do it just adds that little bit of extra plastic uh, into our daily life. So it's, it's really, really interesting you say that because I just noticed that when I went shopping the other day, it's just like every time they get rid of one kind of plastic, a different kind of plastic comes in to replace that plastic, yeah. which is really, really interesting. Um, and yeah, yeah definitely the, um, the food consumption seems to be a big one when it comes to plastic garbage bags. So um learning about composting and worm farming and how to manage that wet waste seems to be a really good step towards um getting those plastics out of our lives yeah there's hundreds of ways to compost too it's not just about the pile you can do bikashi bins and just dig a hole in the garden <clears throat> there's loads of ways of doing things you just got to find one that works for you and stick with it for a while and see if it see if that's something you can carry on with and if it's not think of something else or try something else. Chat with your friends and neighbours and see what they do. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I definitely fall into the trap of I need to do everything at once and it has to be perfect the first time I do it, um, which is a really, really bad sort of mentality to have because very rarely are you going to perfect something on the first try. And I like how you said, Mike, that it's sort of one thing every week. So maybe over 52 weeks as in a year, you might get that all down. But if you sort of just try to overload yourself and try to do everything at once, you're probably not going to be achieving all that in a year because you're going to be like, this sucks. I hate it. I can't get used to this. 
Um, so I think, yeah, that incremental change is really, really important and something that we um, definitely shouldn't overlook. Um, so I've got one question here that's been sitting from, I'm sorry, Agus. So he's said that there is now a Sydney's plastic shopping ban. Uh, oh, hold on, let me go back up. There's a lot of plastic bags being given or sold very cheaply for about five cents at the shops in the Karingai area. Is there anything we can really do to stop this? Um, so I'm just going to direct it over to Min, who is our Better Business Partnership um, liaison. And so she works with a lot of the businesses in the Karingai area on trying to manage single use plastic. So I might pass that one on to you, Min. Yeah, thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, really good question there. So um, I'm not sure if everyone's aware that um, the New South Wales EPA has brought out a single use plastic bag ban, and that actually came into effect on the 1st of June this year. So what that means is all of those lightweight um, shopping bags, plastic shopping bags that have the handles on them. So not the fruit and veg bags that you can get at Coles and Woolies and IGA, but the specifically the ones that have the handles on them and the really thin ones. So that'd be ones that you might get from like sushi takeaway shops or $2 shops or even some chemists were still using them. So those bags are now banned um, in New South Wales and every state in Australia has actually banned them. New South Wales was the last state to ban those bags. So if there are um, retailers or shops who are still using those bags, it's actually illegal now for them to be using them. So um, someone was asking, what can we do about it? So I think the first thing to do would be to speak with the shop owner and let them know that there isn't there's a plastics ban in place. Um, that would be the first point of call. Um, and then secondly, you could report it to the EPA. That feels like a little bit harsh to do that, <laughs> dobbing in a shop, but um, you are within your rights to do that if it does concern you. The other thing I would suggest is actually maybe let me know. Um, I'm the Better Business Partnership program manager for Kringai. So that means that I work closely with all businesses in Kringai um, and all businesses can join our program. It's completely free. So part of my role is to educate businesses on what they can and can't do. And um, one of those things is about the plastics ban that is in place. So feel free to get in touch with me. I'll put my contact details in the chat or maybe Karen can because uh, thanks. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll just put our sustainability inbox yeah. details. So if yeah. um, you ever do want to get in touch with Min and the Better Business Partnership to sort of improve business practices in the Kringai area when it comes to plastics, um, you can let us know um, and hopefully we can, yeah, take it from there. But yeah, thank you, Agus, for your question. A really good one and definitely very concerning because I see it a lot as well. It's really difficult because you put a ban in, but that doesn't necessarily enforce it. I think you can have all the rules in place, but if you don't actually have that inherent behaviour change happening, we don't really sort of see it widespread across our communities. Um, so yeah, really important to sort of stay on top of that and do what we can as individuals. Um, and yeah, Jen, did you have anything to add to that? Because obviously you're doing boomerang bags, you're making all these reusable bags. Is there any way to sort of get those reusable bags more widely spread into the shops? Like, do you have any experience in that area? Yeah, we're always looking for people who want to stock our bags and give them away or sell them gold coin donation. That's up to them. Um, yeah. More than, more than welcome to come and contact us about that. I'd yeah, like, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. and I've probably yes. a list of list of companies to contact you guys about that, you know, they put reusable on their plastic bags and think it's okay, which it's, it's not, so. Right, yeah, it's crazy right. how pervasive it is where you, the, the, what's it called, um, greenwashing, the amount of greenwashing that we sort of see in this space and it's just you just sort of have to live with it I guess so um yeah guys if you do want to help support the reduction of single use bags single use plastic bags in the Kringai community please um yeah have a look at boomerang bags and the work that Jen's doing um there's a lot of good alternatives for you there and something that you can share with your community like you know if you see someone using single use plastic bags just take one of Jen's bags along and try and get them to to start thinking about 
what the products they're consuming. We also, we also make reusable produce bags. So instead of juggling your apples, you could use a net bag or, a, you know, an old um, laundry bag or something that's lightweight that you can put them in. There's always options instead of those plastic bags that we can use. We make yeah. them out of old net curtains. So, that's fantastic. Like, yeah. Yeah. They're good, really good to use. They don't weigh anything, so they don't cost you. And, and you can wash them and reuse them and they can go straight in your in your crisper, which is really good too. Too easy. So it doesn't always have to be inconvenient. There's always a solution out there. Um, so we've got a question sitting here from Bridget, a uh, question from Mike. So I live in a small unit with limited outdoor space. I have a worm farm, no space for a compost bin. What tips can you give me to grow some of my own veg, please? That over to you, Mike. Yep. Um, the biggest one I can give you is join a community garden. There are loads about and, yeah, they're always welcome for new members. And the best thing there is you learn how to garden while you're doing it um, and have a good social while you're at it. But um, some people do a lot of gardening in the, the communal space around units. Um, and it, it, this it, it's when you're in a unit and you've not got this, the obviously the real estate to grow stuff, that's what the community is for. If you've got friends and um, family that have got spaces in their garden that they'd be like willing to let you borrow or use, um, or you know, go around your if your mum is getting on a bit and can't manage the garden much anymore, go and help her out and and plant stuff in her garden and grow food. Yeah, you, absolutely. You've got to get creative with your, um, yeah, all the people you know and see if they'll be willing to share. And it, it's the one thing about all this is it's really hard to do it all on your own. Like making all these changes in your life sometimes gets a bit overwhelming. But if you band together with other people, it becomes more like a, you get a little bit of competition between people. And um, people like the gardeners in particular are more than willing to swap, give, and hand over anything they can do help you grow your own yeah absolutely I think um a collaborative approach as a community is definitely the way to go because yeah I totally agree have doing all these changes yourself especially when you're not knowledgeable in that field is incredibly difficult very overwhelming and not you know sustainable long term because I think eventually if it's not something that you inherently enjoy doing you're probably not going to keep doing that for the rest of your life um, so we do have the Taramara Community Gardens. So I definitely, um, Bridget, recommend you sort of get in touch with them and sort of see what kind of resources they have for you, whether you can go out there and just sort of chat with them and have a think about what options are there for you for worm farming or smaller scale composting. There's also this interesting um, sort of website called Share Waste. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. So you basically just find local neighbors in your community in your area and they might have like a compost bin or a worm farm that's available for more food waste and scraps so you can sort of just bring your waste along and sort of just dump it in their bin or in their worm farm so it's a really really cool idea um you could i did it i used to do it a long time ago and i like used to eat a lot not so much anymore but you can i just used to freeze my scraps i would just put it in the freezer in like a little tub and i just freeze them so it wouldn't like snow up the kitchen and then sort of like once a week i would take those frozen scraps and just take it down um over to my neighbors and they would sort of handle it for me so it was a really really cool sort of network community approach as opposed to me sort of taking on all this extra responsibility and extra work that I just didn't really have time for but still managing to really reduce um, my overall waste and also reduce um, the plastic that was um, coming into my home so the, it would be a really wonderful sort of community project to get sort of like a communal compost bin somewhere in Karingai where all our residents can sort of contribute their waste to. So that's something that we're working on with our net zero communities program. So if that's something that interests you, I would definitely think about getting uh, more involved in net zero. Uh, so I'll put some details about that in the chat box guys. But yeah, thank you uh, so much for your question. I'm sorry, my dog is barking at me. So just bear with me. 
Okay, so we've got a question from Sue. Um, so I might direct this one to Nin. Uh, apart from Source at St. Ives, do you know of any other businesses that allow you to bring your own containers? Uh, I was thinking of things like buying ham or deli items. So that's a really good one, Sue. Thank you, because that is a huge issue when it comes to all those yeah, unavoidable really, plastic containers. Yeah, re really good question. Um, I was just, I just read that question, so I was just Googling um, because I did come across one business and it's called devolver um, and the way they've set their business up is so I'm not sure if um, anyone knows about the green caffeine um, reusable coffee cup system um, so these these people on I think they're on the northern beaches yeah they're on the northern beaches but they've set up a similar system for reusable um, swap and go type system for reusable containers like takeaway food containers I know it's not specifically what you're asking for there um, so in terms of taking containers to delis and things like that but um it is worth having a look at um, devolver I'm not sure if they're up and running just yet because last time I looked at them was a couple of months ago and they weren't quite they hadn't quite launched so they might have launched now but essentially it's a um, reusable scheme like a swap and go scheme where you have an app on a phone and you borrow a container from the takeaway store you use the container then you wash it out and take it back to the same store or to any other participating store so um, there's some really good initiatives kind of starting up by third party businesses who are really trying to tackle these reusable um, you know container type systems so there's the green caffeine for coffee cups and then there's the revolver for takeaway food in terms of um, actually uh, I guess addressing uh, plastic that's used in delis and things like that um, you did mention one already, Sue, um, but I'm not sure of any other specific businesses who are doing that. I think what you could do is try it out at local delis and butchers and see if you can actually take your own containers there because often what happens with businesses is if they see a demand for something, they start to change the way they think and, and the way they actually start running and managing their own business. So if there starts to be a demand, like customers are starting to bring in their own containers, you see it at markets all the time. People are taking back their own reusable containers when they're buying their takeaway food and market storeholders are starting to accept them and use them. Um, so the same thing can happen in restaurants, cafes as well, um, as long as the cafe owner is kind of okay with that, I suppose, from an oh and perspective. So, yeah, I'd say um, give it a go and, and, you know, hopefully that can start the grassroots changes that we want to see in these businesses. Min, there's a butcher's outside St Ives, um, Woolworths at St Ives that did a bring your own container. Yeah, great. Shut it down since COVID, but they right. used to do it and they promoted it. Um, but I find that my local butcher is more than welcome, more, more than happy for me to bring my own container. Yeah. He's, yeah. You know, he's, he's, we'll fill it up, do whatever. Yeah. So I say yeah. just, just ask. That's it. Walk just in ask. Like, walk in like you know what you're doing and just yep. on the That's counter. It. And That's it. 100%. They know, they'll, they'll be happy to accept it. 100% yep. agree with you there, Jen. Yeah. I found um, it's the smaller local places, obviously, and a lot of them do have a fairly positive outlook you're not always going to be you know said yes to but I think if you just go in there and ask a lot of the times they might be a bit sort of like confused but you know eventually you'll be like yeah why not okay they have fine. to learn how to use the scales with the container but they I think so they've just got to tear the container and then you know good to go so I, really, I think so I think it's just a matter of again back to you know community helping community we can't do all these things alone so it's all about building those networks um, and connections of people around us um, so we've got a few questions um, sorry guys I know you want your questions answered we've just got a lot in the queue so I'm trying to get to them all uh, so please bear with us uh, Laurie um, you've got a couple questions in there I'll start with the compost one so this one's from Mike I compost most of my waste but my family don't so it makes it very messy I'm interested to hear about cold composting 
Um, can you throw in a bush garden or do we have to dig a hole? Um, cold composting, you can, I mean, the, the easiest way to do it is with a classic black bin for cold composting. So you can just fill up a, a one of those, I think they're about 400 litre plastic bins. It takes about three months or so. And then you've got to leave it for six months for it to like do its thing before it comes soil again. Um, it's not, compost, this is, it's a bit, it's a huge subject. There's just so many ways of doing it. Um, Burying it in the garden is great. If you've got the space to bury it in a different place in the garden, you know, all the, you've got to dig a hole and put this week's in and then dig a hole next door and put next week's in and so on and so on around your garden. You start digging up the whole garden and you're disturbing what's supposed to be growing there. So you, you've got to get in a cycle that works for you about what you're doing with this stuff. So if you want to keep it in one spot, the classic compost bin is definitely the way to go, I would have said, um, just in an urban backyard. Uh, you need serious amounts of space and um, I guess grunt to do hot, hot, hot composting, which is a lot quicker than cold composting. But um, yeah, you, the, there's a question there about being in the shade, so it takes very long to compost. Um, if you're putting the right amount of uh, nitrogen rich, sludgy, smelly stuff in, as you do the brown, leafy, dead leaves, um, wood chip, carbon material cardboard you don't need any sunlight at all it's bacterial action it's got nothing to do with the sun the bacteria make it hot so it will warm up a bit but it won't go crazy in a cold compost bin like it won't kill all the pathogens and all the weed seeds in a cold compost bin but um it'll it'll do a good job you just need to leave it longer that's all yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Mike. And um, thanks, Agus, for suggesting, uh, Laurie, for you to have a look at the composting workshop. So yeah, we are running, uh, not from our team directly, but the waste team, our colleagues, will be running uh, a free composting workshop uh, in August 4th. Agus is written there, so thanks for that, Agus. Really good uh, if you want to learn more about composting, Laurie. I think it'll be a really good opportunity to um, yeah, learn a bit more uh, and really get your composting down the way you want to get it down. Um, so thank you for that question. I'll move on to uh, Viswa. So Viswa, I'll answer this one about the FOGO bins. Um, so FOGO is food and organic uh, waste. Um, so we have been trying really hard to get FOGO bins in the Karingai area. I know there are a few councils in Sydney who are trialing them. So I think Randwick Council is one of them. So they've handed out little caddies and little compostable bags to go with those caddies for food waste um, to trial that waste stream. We are really keen to get that going as a council. It's something we really want to do. Um, we just don't really have all the infrastructure ready yet. So it's definitely something that we're thinking about doing um, but just not something that's going to be immediately there in the future. But I totally agree with you, this well that we definitely should have FOGO bins. It will be, it's a key part of managing our food waste in the future and you know, diverting that waste from landfill. So I'm right there with you. I feel your frustration um, and just know that we're really working on trying to get that going um, for our residents. So yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, Bridget, I can see you've asked about recycles. Oh, Mike, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say about the composting. Like most gardeners can't make enough compost, <laughs> and they love other people's food scraps and whatever they can get. I I, I take lawn clippings from three gardens, um, all the food scraps from another house. If you can get like widen your networks to include a gardener, you could basically throw all your food waste at the gardener, and they would process it and give you back compost. Mm -hmm. Um, and you will learn how to compost in the process if you're having problems with it. Like, honestly, like, like you're saying, if you can get together as a community and um, share everything, you'd find all your problems would solve straight away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this is our whole, yeah, community approach as opposed to sort of individual, um, yeah, efforts. Um, so, yeah, we are really thinking of getting a communal, like, composting uh, bin for our residents. Um, so that's something that we're hoping to get off the ground with our net zero champions. 
So if you guys are interested in being a net zero champion um, and trying to you know, manage our organic waste, please get in touch with me. I've put my email in the chat and just let me know if you want to be a part of that group. <coughs> Roxy, be quiet. Uh, we'll let us know and you will get you into that group so you can get involved in that. Um, yeah, just to add on to that this way, I can see you've written that I live in an apartment with a large balcony. I have a lot of indoor plants and balcony plants. I produce a lot of used ground coffee. Is there any way I can have any kind of compost bin in my balcony and use the output from the indoor plant pots? Uh, Mike, I might ask you to take that one again. Yeah, co coffee's um, a compost ingredient, but I wouldn't use it like wholesale it's not great for your plants in the long run um on its own as a compost it's fantastic but you need a whole lot of other ingredients to make it sort of mix in variety is the key in a compost bin um but i would i'm not sure it goes in a bakashi bin or anything but you could um yeah if you use bakashi you can get the the liquid wee off of that and put that on your plants and same with worm farms worm uh, worms love coffee. I put all my coffee grounds in a worm farm. So yeah, you can uh, use the, the liquid that comes off a worm farm to feed all your indoor plants. And Sasha, did you have something you wanted to add to that? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah we actually uh, have bakasha beans and um, uh, previously we were living also in an apartment and um, that's the same situation basically. So uh, we uh, we had uh, coffee, coffee like grounded beans and um, uh all other like food scraps we're vegans so like not not other like basically it's all plant-based and uh uh yeah as you mentioned the uh, share waste uh we found somebody uh with a huge garden in gordon uh who accepts our food scraps uh, he's happy we are happy <laughs> that we get rid of our food scraps and uh, we do the right thing so i mean uh it's really easy with bakasha beans and I, I think it's like super convenient if you have a limited space uh you just need to uh, find somebody who would accept your um like a food scraps basically so yeah fantastic yeah i can't um yeah I, i've really enjoyed using share waste it's a really great great way of connecting with your local community it's it's and the best thing is it's mutually beneficial it's not just you dumping your waste on someone and it's their problem they have to deal with it they want your waste they want your food scraps because that's going to help them as well so I just love that whole, you know, we're all helping each other towards this one goal, as opposed to all of us sort of struggling individually and trying to catch up and do all these sort of insurmountable tasks that you know, we don't have the time for. Um, so yeah, I yeah I would really recommend um, getting onto Share Waste and sort of having a look and see who's in your neighborhood, and you might even make some friends. You don't know, like it's just a great way of um, connecting with the people around you. Um, Bridget, I can see that you've asked about Recycle Smart. Uh, we don't participate in Recycle Smart as of yet. So, our colleagues over at the Waste team are working on this. So I know they've talked about this with us in the past. Totally agree with you that it would be great for us to get involved in. Um, so, yeah, I think the Waste team is working on that. Um, if you have any questions about it, I think you can get in touch with um, customer service over there and they should be able to help you out uh, with any pro uh, developments in that. But yeah, thank you for sharing that. I'm sorry if you hear whining in the background, guys. My dog is um, very upset that I'm not paying her attention <laughs> at every minute. Uh, and I think I've got just another one. Uh, any question? Uh, just Oh, sorry, let me just scroll through, guys. Oh, so Sally has put in some fantastic information about the Bokashi bin. Um, Sally, do you want to just unmute yourself and let everyone know, just give us a bit of a run through on the Bokashi bin? Because it seems to be quite a popular alternative, particularly for people in apartments who don't have a lot of space. Do you want to just um, unmute yourself? And sure, yes. So I've um, I've been using a Bakashi bin for a little while now. I find it really useful um, to actually break down a lot of the um, food waste that my family and I generate that can't go in the compost bin. So all the worm farms. So um, things like meat and dairy, which get very stinky in in um, my landfill bin, uh, rather than putting it in there, I put it in my Bakashi bin. 
So I simply um, make sure it's sort of chopped up relatively small, um, put it in my Bokashi bin and then I spray it with this enzyme spray and pack it down so it doesn't have any air in it. And, um, and then I close the lid and I just leave it outside. It just sits outside my kitchen window um, and it sits outside there for a few weeks and then it's got a little tap at the bottom. So you can, after a few weeks, you can open the tap and you can drain off some of the fluid and then you need to um, water that down by, I think it's one to a hundred because it actually becomes very acidic. So you water it right down and it's great nutrition for your plants in your garden. Um, but I, I love my Bakashi bin. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Sally. Um, I think my mum really wanted to do that as well because she's, you know, quite old now. She doesn't really want to, the hassle of, you know, managing a compost uh, bin or compost anything. So the Bakashi bin seems to be like a good alternative for her. Um, Roxy, can you please be quiet? I'm really sorry, guys. Um, dog is very excited. She obviously wants to go for the walk. Um, so I'm so sorry. I was very distracted. Um, Sally, I think we've got a question about meat in the Bokashi bin. Um, do you want to just quickly go over that uh, again for us? Yeah, sure. Um, you can put um, any any kind of meat, so any leftover meat from meals, just like, as I said, sort of chop it up relatively finely, like not too finely, but, you know, relatively small sort of, you know, sort of smallish, and that will just help it to break down quicker, that's all. And then that can go in your Bokashi bin, no problem at all. And I forgot to say before, it's really great to use your Bokashi bin in combination with your Tom bag, because if you're not putting any um, meat or dairy in your Tom bag, you're not getting any stinky smell. So your Tom bag is, is really great to, to use and it, it's better for your bin. Someone was asking about um, the, um, the Tom bag and littering on the street. I haven't had any littering on the street, can I say, with my Tom bag. I just put it straight in my wheelie bin and then it goes straight from the wheelie bin into the back of the garbage truck. I've never seen any mess anywhere. So I don't think it's an issue. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I hope that answers that question from previously. Yeah, thanks for answering that, Sally. Um, Sasha, did you have anything you wanted to add on that? Yeah, so regarding the littering on the streets, uh, again, we, we get these questions, uh, this question uh, quite quite a lot uh, from people who are considering to use tomb bag, uh, which is good. I mean, people are worried about that. Um, uh, and I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, before we started um, uh, tomb bag, we actually contacted all the councils in Australia. Uh, it was like uh, two and a half years ago. Some of them are still responding. <laughs> So, <laughs> and most of them, uh, most of those that responded to us, uh, uh, they are actually um, um, fine with uh, um, like having loose uh, garbage without a plastic bag. Also, like there are a couple of uh, councils that like are uh, requiring uh, to uh, bag your garbage. Uh, the most problematic thing uh, for councils, and I'm sure it is the same for you, uh, for Karinge, uh, is uh, to uh, the necessity to wrap uh, like a, a, a waste such as a, like a dust from your vacuum cleaner uh, or like lightweight plastic, wrap it in, I don't know, like for example, newspaper, uh, right? So that it doesn't fly away. Um, and then, then uh, apart from that, uh, it should be fine. I mean, uh, we are using it ourselves, as I said, and it never happens that like you know or there was like any litter on the street uh left so um i guess it should be fine yeah thanks for that sasha um yeah and really great for you to be concerned laurie i really appreciate you putting that through i uh, just got a question from janet what advice do you have for storing food in fridges i reuse plastic bags over and over again yeah that's great Fridges dry up food very badly. The wax wraps are expensive and vary greatly in flexibility. Um, Sally, do you want to give that one? Because I know you do a lot of um, these wax wraps and that kind of thing. Sure, sure, yes. Um, for food storage in the fridge, I tend to use um, plastic Tupperware type containers for, for most of my um, leftover dinners and things like that, leftover food. Um, like you, I recycle plastic bags over and over. I wash them, up, wash them and reuse them. My family think I'm crazy, but I don't care. Um, so I'm reusing plastic bags over and over. Um, um, and, uh, 
Yeah, and with the beeswax wrap, I use that as well to put over the top of containers and things or to wrap up smaller things. Um, There's also you, um, silicon wraps. And silicon well. wraps too, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and there are some, I've also got some silicon um, Ziploc bags, which I reuse over and over. Um, I think they're stash, uh, stash bags or something, um, but they're really fantastic because they actually seal properly um, and you could put liquid in them and it won't leak out. Um, but there are loads of things you can get. Um, if you go to um, um, the eco, those eco stores around the place, there are loads of things you can buy there. You can also make your own beeswax wraps. I've made my own before using beeswax wrap, resin and uh, the other thing I've forgotten, pine resin and your jojoba oil, that's right. And that makes it nice and flexible. Um, but um, I can give you a recipe for that if you're interested, just let me know. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Sasha's just said that my grandparents used to cover everything with plates. So that's how we used to do it back in the day. <laughs> so there's always an alternative. Mike, uh, did you have something to add on that? Yeah, my dad's fridge is full of old butter containers. He puts all, all his leftover stuff in butter containers. We use ice cream cartons and old yogurt pots. Uh, the fridge is full of them. Like the, it, you, yeah. you're constantly producing your own containers absolutely old jam jars as well work what great yeah. honey jars everything yeah so you find a lot of the packaging that we consume doesn't actually need to be thrown out we can reuse a lot of it um so yeah great uh great question there was also another comment that i just missed uh laurie has said glass is great for food storage keeps the food a lot longer um, and they're on sale a lot. So yes, definitely look out for those sales. Um, Sue has added, there's a new Glad wrap made out of potato peels called Great Wrap. It is a bit expensive and a little hard to get off the roll. It comes from Victoria. Interesting, have any of you guys heard of this potato, potato peels and making wraps? How cool is that? Have you guys heard of that? No, okay, very cool, Sue. Thank you for sharing that. Um, that would be really interesting. And I wonder what the lifespan of that uh, wrap would be and how long it could hold. Um, we're just coming up to two minutes to eight. So I'll just do one more question. I think Laurie's put through and then we'll wrap up. Uh, so how do I, I think this is step to Sasha. How do I do a 15 minute wash in my washing machine to wash the reusable bin bags? I'll give that to you, Sasha. Uh, yeah, it's just a quick washing cycle. So uh, you just basically set your washing machine for a quick washing cycle, um, uh, just cold water. Uh, you don't need uh, um, hot water for that, warm water for that. And uh, we actually use no detergents uh, as well. And you can just, uh, after that, you can line dry uh, your bag or use, uh, use a dryer again on a uh, low, low heat or no heat uh, uh, setting. Thanks, Sasha. And I think Sally has also added, you don't have to use the washing machine. Did you just want to unmute yourself and, and let us know, Sally? Sure. I was just saying to Laurie, you don't have to use your washing machine. I, I don't use my washing machine to wash my Tom bag. I just use, um, I wipe it down with a cloth. Um, if it's really um, bad, I just put it out on the lawn and I spray it with a hose and then give it a little um, wipe with a brush um, but that, that's all you need to do so if you don't have a, a long a short cycle on your washing machine just do it by hand it's not difficult and if you're not putting food in your tom bag it, it won't be any trouble at all yeah fantastic thanks for those tips Sally and uh, Sasha uh, very innovative with the tom bag I'm really looking forward to getting one myself um, so we're just at 7.30, so I think we will wrap up. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate you coming in on a Thursday evening and, yeah, spending some time with us and getting to know about how you can reduce plastics uh, in your life. So thank you again and, uh, yeah, have a lovely evening.